Hola, bienvenidos a Chalk and Talk. This week we have a suggestion from Pertu. Pertu, okay? And um, Pertu has asked us to talk about... The suggestion was a bit longer, but what I'm doing is I'm going to focus on, uh, as, as was requested, uh, focus maybe just on the one thing. Yeah, and then we can always cover the rest of the suggestions later. But I'm going to look at the word vuelta. Vuelta. I've already done um, a chalk and talk on things like darle la vuelta, darse la vuelta. Okay, so for that, I'm not going to spend that much time on it. So if you want to, to understand about the thing about turning, I'm going to cover it a little bit here, then uh, go back. Okay. And have a look at that. I'm not sure what number it is, but it'll be there in the in the, in the list. But what we, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at some of the ways that vuelta is used, and it's it is a, a highly used word, a highly used word. Okay, so we'll just we'll go through the the general idea. What is vuelta? Vuelta is oh I've dropped my paper. Picked up. Okay, vuelta is. that shape okay that shape una vuelta could be a lap a lap of a, of a racetrack una vuelta could be for example if i was going to wrap a cord around something okay una vuelta would be one turn if i was coiling wire onto a motor una vuelta would be one turn so you see that that that's that's what it is una vuelta okay so let's look at the ways that wealth is used. So we can use it in a similar way to volver, you know, the verb volver, to return. And wealth is used for return, okay? So to, to return, you can say estar de vuelta, okay? And I used to do this. I used to say this in Mexico, I remember. I used to walk into a room and say, estoy de vuelta, I'm back. Yeah, estoy de vuelta. So, estar de vuelta is to be back, to be back, yeah? To, to be on the, the track coming back in again. Um, but also you can talk about um, a return. If you want to talk about return, you can say a la vuelta, okay? A la vuelta, and we're going to come to that as well because it, it actually pertains to other expressions. But for example, I could say to you, um, ah, puedes comprar pan a la vuelta. And that means, can you buy bread on the way back? Yeah, a la vuelta. So that's a la vuelta. Okay, so, um, or you can, you can say, a la vuelta puedes comprar eh, unas pilas. Okay, so on returning, when you come back, can you buy some batteries? So that's what that a la vuelta is. However, if you then add the word de, to a la vuelta, that becomes around. Yeah, makes sense, doesn't it? Around. Um, and the often use it with a la vuelta de la esquina. A la vuelta de la esquina. Exactly as we do in English, around the corner. Yeah, as a metaphor and also as a reality. For example, um, la tienda a la vuelta de la esquina. Okay. The house, uh, the, the shop, sorry, around the corner. La tienda a la vuelta de la esquina. Está a la vuelta de la esquina. It's around the corner. Okay? So literally, location. La, um, eh, está a la vuelta de mi casa. A la vuelta de mi casa. It's around my house. Yeah? Nearby. Around the corner from my house. Basically, that's what you're saying. Okay? So, a la vuelta de. And of course, in a metaphorical way, we say um, Christmas is just around the corner, right? And you can use that same, tenemos las vacaciones a la vuelta de la esquina, right? We have the holidays around the corner, right? So, um, you can also use it that way. Okay, so what else have we got? Right. Then we've got like, this darle la vuelta and darse la vuelta, right? Two pronouns. <laughs> Two pronouns. Okay. 
Darle la vuelta a algo is to turn something over, typically, or to turn it around. But quite often they'll use it for, for example, this. Voy a darle la vuelta a la tortilla. And listen to, listen to the structure. Darle la vuelta a la tortilla. This is the classic le a. Okay? It happens all the time. When you, and, it, and it's not just for people. It's for any object that you are going to do something to it. And if you use le, then you're going to use a. Okay? It's just what it, it isn't the... the, the um, the personal A in that respect, it's just a set thing. Lea. So, voy a darle la vuelta a la tortilla. I'm going to turn the omelette over. Okay? Darle la vuelta. So, and then, darse la vuelta, darse la vuelta, well, that's a reflexive. Okay? And that just means, uh, and it's actually, it's not, all right, it's a pronominal verb. Later, we've talked about them before, and I'm just I'm, write, I'm just writing that part in the in the pronoun uh, pronouns book. But basically, there are some things that um, the ways that we use it to avoid passive voice, for example. Yeah, um, that the tortilla has to be turned over. Right, that has to be turned over. Now that's passive voice. Um, because we don't know who's turned it over. It has to be, it has to be turned over by the cook. All right. So to avoid that, what we do is we use this pronominal verb. So we say, la tortilla tiene que darse la vuelta. All right. And that is basically the, to the, the, the tortilla, the, the, what's it called? Omelette. That's it. The omelette has to turn itself over, All right? As if it could do it itself. But that's how they do it. That's the way that they, they do it to avoid the passive voice. So, tiene que darse la vuelta, has to turn over or turn around. Or, yo tengo que darle la vuelta a la tortilla. Me, I'm doing it to the, the tortilla. Okay? So, two ways. If, if you don't want to mention who's doing it, and you just say, hey, it, that needs to be turned over, yeah? La tortilla tiene que darse la vuelta. The, the tortilla needs to turn itself over. Yeah? O yo tengo que darle la vuelta a la tortilla. So, two ways. But la vuelta, dar la vuelta is, is to turn over or to turn around. Okay? All right? And then um, we've got vuelta y vuelta. Vuelta y vuelta. Shh. So that's how you ask for something rare. A meat rare makes sense, doesn't it? If you just go, tsh, tsh, that's going to be pretty rare. All right. So that's basically what they call it. They call it turn and turn, vuelta y vuelta. Okay. Um, so if you're going to ask for something in a restaurant and they say, ¿Cómo quiere la carne? ¿Cómo quiere la, uh, el filete? And you say, ah, vuelta y vuelta. Vuelta y vuelta, por favor. Por favor. Vuelta y vuelta. Okay? So that's just ch -ch -ch, and that's how it will come. Um, so be aware of that. It will be extremely rare, especially in, in Spain. It'll be very rare. Vuelta y vuelta. Okay? Um, so, vuelta, in essence, is turn. Yeah, and so whenever you get into that, oh, and and it's also that shape, which is round, around. Yeah, so that's why we say, a la vuelta de la esquina, around the corner. Yeah, and obviously you you, you get things also. For example, de ida y de vuelta, de ida y de vuelta, which is return, which is actually the going and the coming back. The going and the returning. Yeah? See, la ida y la vuelta. Okay, so la, la vuelta is always the, the, the coming back. One little thing just to refer back to when you come back, will you buy bread? You have two choices, two ways of saying that as we started off. Estar de vuelta or a la vuelta. Okay? 
the issue that you've got with that is that if you use the word when and you're referring to them coming back later, that's when future, which demands the use of the subjunctive. So, for example, when you say, ah, cuando estés de vuelta, no estás, cuando estés de vuelta, puedes comprar pan. Ok, o compras pan. Cuando estés de vuelta. So, if you're going to use the estar de vuelta and you're referring to something coming up, then remember you've got to use the subjunctive. Much easier just to say, a, a la vuelta puedes comprar pan. Yeah, much easier. But obviously, if you want to challenge yourself, slip in a subjunctive. Cuando estés de vuelta, mm -hmm. me compras un, whatever, una tarta de chocolate. Yeah? All right. So, there you are. That's, that's all of the, um, le, I haven't missed any. Let's have a look. A la vuelta, estamos de vuelta, eh, darle la vuelta, vuelta y vuelta, mm -hmm. y una vuelta. Ok, so that's, that's your vuelta, perdu. Ok, very important to get handle on, on that because um, it comes up a lot. The good thing is, because we know it's, it's th that shape and that we know it's to do with return or round, then most times you can you can get an idea of what they're talking about. Even, even things like, you know, vuelta y vuelta. Shh, shh. Yes, it's a turn and a turn, a turn and a turn. That's all that you're saying, really. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you, right, let's see. Let's see. And I want to know in the comments. All right. I'm going to tell you something that until six months ago, I did not know. And yet, it's been so in my face, in Spanish, it's been so in my face that how I didn't see it, I don't know. How I didn't see it, I don't know. Now that I know about it, I hear it everywhere. Everywhere. Okay? Mm. And I want to know if you've noticed it. And the only reason I found out, well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you in Spanish. Okay. Tiene que ver con el verbo coger. Entonces, ¿esto existe en España? No creo que exista en América Latina, pero es así. Mi hija tenía un novio, su exnovio, Adrián, y Adrián, ella, ella dijo, joder, siempre cuando empieza a hablar Adrián, Empieza casi cada frase con, pues, cogí y cogió y, eh, ¿ok? Y ella, ella dijo, y, y no sé qué, 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 qué es. ¿Por qué dice, pues, cogí y, vale? Y yo pensé, pues, no, nunca he oído eso. Y desde ese momento, todo el rato, yo escucho a la gente aquí diciendo, pues cogí y me fui al médico, ¿vale? Pues cogió y se fue a hablar con él, ¿vale? Y claro que tenemos la misma cosa en inglés. Bueno, por lo menos en Inglaterra. ¿Por qué usan coger como went, ¿vale? Como el verbo to go. En inglés decimos, well, I went and uh, made an appointment. Well, I went and told him. I went and bla, bla, bla. ¿Ok? Y no es, muchas veces no hemos ido a ningún lado, ¿vale? Por ejemplo, podemos decir, pues estaba aquí y yo me enfadé y pues, y, y, and I went and told him. Pero estaba aquí. Me explico. Entonces, usamos went. Eh, he went and ate it. He went and ate it. Pero no, no, no fui a ningún lado, no. Estaba aquí y se lo comió. Pues, para decir went, ellos dicen coger, ¿vale? Y dicen, pues cogí y me lo comí. ¿Vale? Que es 
Exactamente. Well, I went and ate it. ¿Vale? Yo no sé si eso, ese went eh, existe en los Estados Unidos, pero en, es muy coloquial. Hay que decirlo. Es muy coloquial. No es... Yo no, no digo... En inglés yo no uso I went and ate it. Pero puede, se puede y mucha gente lo dice. Por ejemplo... Eh, yo trabajaba con una mujer que decía eh, comes, ¿vale? Y ella decía, well, he comes and he says, and I comes and I says, and he comes and he, and he says, and I comes and I says. Joder, me, me, me volvía loca esa mujer. Pero ella usaba el verbo come, to come, venir, ¿no? Y también mi abuela, mi abuela, eh, la madre de mi padre, ella usaba to turn around, ¿vale? Cuando hablaba. Well, I turned around and, and I said, and she turned around and, and she said. Y mi padre siempre decía, espera un momento, you turned around and said something, she turned around, so you were back to back then, ¿vale? Pero es, es, una, es una forma de hablar, ¿no? Pues los españoles usan coger. So, entonces, vais ahora vais a escuchar eso mucho. Pues cogí y... Es simplemente, well, I turned around and I... o oh, I... Eh, I comes and I... o oh, I went... And, ¿vale? Y ahora lo escucho todos los días y toda la gente lo, lo usa. Y yo no sé cómo era posible que no escuchara nada durante, ¿sabes? Que no, que no hubiera escuchado esa expresión. Entonces creo que mi mente simplemente la borraba o no entendía lo que decían, así que no, no lo escuchaba, no sé. Pero es tan común. Y, y muy interesante. Pues eso me enseña algo. ¿Vale? Es que lo he aprendido de mi hija. Mi hija llevaba dos años en, en España, solamente dos años, y ella me enseñó algo tan como, tan obvio, y no lo había visto. Entonces me, me, me pregunto, ¿cuántas otras cosas no veo? Sí, y sin duda millones, sin duda miles y miles. Entonces, ¿no? El viaje, el, el camino a, a tener un buen nivel, ¿sabes? Hacia tener un buen nivel. Es un camino sin fin. Y muchas veces tú crees que, que vas muy bien y no, y no vas bien. Y a veces piensas que puedes ver el final. Y no. Simplemente es otra, otra etapa. No es otro nivel. Llegas a otro nivel, sí, claro, muchas veces. Pero llegar, yo no creo que, que lleguemos. Simplemente mmm, podemos mejorarnos. Pero es un... Es, si no has crecido con un idioma desde la infancia, tienes que aprender todo. ¿Sabes? Cada cosa tienes que aprenderlo. Tienes que notarlo, tienes que verlo. Eh, entonces no es como, eh, como un, un niño nace y se ba baña en, en el idioma y aprende todo de oídas. No es necesario. Aprender nada. Vale, si van a la escuela en, aprenden cosas, pero no estoy hablando de eso. Estoy hablando de cuando escuchas a alguien diciendo, pues cogí y me fui. Para ti es la cosa más natural y normal de la vida y tú entiendes en profundidad el significado. Nosotros, los extranjeros, no tenemos ni idea. Entonces, cada cosa es una cosa nueva. Me explico. No, no tenemos el lujo 
de saberlo. Tenemos que decir, ¿eso qué es? ¿Y qué significa? ¿Y por qué están diciendo eso? ¿Y por qué usan esa conjugación? Con cada cosa. Entonces, es, es un... Aprender un idioma es un reto enorme. Pues cojo y sigo aprendiendo. ¿Vale? Ok, so there you are. That's coger for you. Yeah. Um, did, any, did you know that? Have you heard that before? Am I, the, am I the one who was missing out and everybody else knew about it? Who knows? All right, let's review. Review. Per tu. Ok. How would you say, I'm back? Like Arnie, I'm back. No, he says, I'll be back. Yeah. I'm back. Well, that is, estoy de vuelta. Estoy de vuelta. De vuelta. Yeah. How would you say, um, can, you, um, can you buy some milk on the way back? That would be, puedes comprar leche a la vuelta? Or if you want to challenge yourself, puedes comprar leche cuando estés de vuelta? All right, subjunctive. All right. How would you say, um, there is a shop around the corner? There's a shop around the corner. That would be, hay una tienda a la vuelta de la esquina. A la vuelta de la esquina. Ok. Um, how would you say, can you turn over the omelette? Can you turn over the omelette? That would be, puedes darle la vuelta a la tortilla, por favor. Ok. And how would you say the omelette needs to be turned over? That would be. Tiene que darse la vuelta la tortilla. O la tortilla tiene que darse la vuelta. O... La tortilla se tiene que dar la vuelta. Se tiene que dar la vuelta o tiene que darse la vuelta. Ok. But you have to say la tortilla tiene. No tienes o anything. It has. It has. Yeah. You have to blame the tortilla. Ok. Um, and then, uh, how would you say I want the steak rare? I want the steak rare. Mi hijo se ha despertado. So, I want the steak rare would be quiero el filete vuelta y vuelta. Ok. O hecho vuelta y vuelta. Yeah. Um, ok. And that's it. I think that's all of our vueltas. Uh, yep. Ok. So, I hope that's been of value to you. And we've only just dealt with the word vuelta, ¿ok? And coger. Entonces, cojo y apago la cámara y bajo. Hasta luego, chicos. Adiós.